This is my education, my history. I know it's not a show car. It's just my ongoing fun project that's just going to evolve. My name is Adam Martin, and I drive a 1968 Chevrolet Camaro. I think every old car should kind of have a name because it's really a member of the family. I've had Lucy for a number of years. She's evolved. Just the one coat of paint, a new hood. I've added some pieces to the interior. I still don't have a radio after 18 years, but that's okay. I've got a big block under the hood. It serves me well. I was 16 when I bought this car. Really green under the nails, man. I didn't know what to do with it. I kind of knew how to change oil. I knew about spark plugs. I picked it up for a deal and uh, started sort of my career with Camaros and sort of in the automotive restoration world and industry. a 400 small block Chevy and a turbo 350 automatic in it, which was awesome. It was a wonderful car. I didn't know it was the wrong engine for the car. And then that's when I started doing the research on the car and realized that it was a six cylinder. So I got to thinking, it's a plain Jane car. Let's take some liberty with it. I built a 454 for it because the Camaro came with a big block and why not put the biggest one you can find in at the time? going to machinist school, had a great time building this engine, it was exciting. Well, if you have a big, beautiful Chevy orange engine, and chrome valve covers, you can't skimp on the exhaust manifold. I went overboard, I bought these beautiful Hooker Super Comp exhaust headers and I had them ceramic coated. What I didn't take into consideration was how all this stuff fits together inside the engine compartment. Fast forward, it takes me about seven or eight tries and I finally figure out the magic combination. And that's to kind of get the engine and transmission lowered in. You've got one header coming up from the bottom and the other one you come from the top and then you bring all three pieces together and then these silly headers, they don't fit. They rub against the frame rail. Now I gotta hit those things with a hammer. I still have the same hammer marks in the headers today as I did back then, but today she still runs that same 454 big block that I built 17 years ago now, and I probably have a little over 20,000 miles on the motor. It fires up every day, runs cool, a pretty heavy duty shift kit. I got my B&M Quicksilver automatic shifter, so I, I kind of have my manual shifting transmission feel going on, but I still kind of have that freedom of an automatic just to put it in drive and cruise. This car, when I bought it, was primer gray. And on the firewall of a Camaro, there's a cowl tag, and there's a paint code on that number, um, DD, which represents Garado Blue, based in 1968. I'm making pizzas, eight, 10 bucks an hour, and that's not gonna pay for a body shop to fix the car and paint it, so I'm gonna do it myself. Started sanding the car and sanding and sanding. I don't know if you've ever done body work before, but it takes forever. Finally, it was time to paint. And this is in the wooden two-car garage. I've got the propane torpedo heater. We hung plastics, we had an exhaust fan. I start going over the car. The first coat wasn't very good. And so I well, spraying up top doesn't make sense. I should spray this panel as it would sit on the car. And so I'm spraying along and paint's looking good and um, stuff that we were hanging from the rafters. Well, I didn't secure them properly and a coat hanger <laughs> fell from the rafters right into my wet paint and left you know, perfect little coat hanger hook in my fresh paint. And um, well, it's still there. <laughs> in high school, 
I took auto shop class. I wanted to learn more about engines because I was kind of curious. I had the Camaro, so thankfully my high school had a alternative program where I could go to a local trade school and I was able to take a machinist course to learn how to build engines. It was a fantastic place for me to go during my junior and senior year. Um, I knew some mechanics in the area and a garage owner and he offered me a position as a mechanic after I graduated high school. But that gave me a year in a working three bay gas station. I was the oil change guy, I was the tune-up guy, and I would do old stuff and I could do new stuff, but I really wasn't excited about working on the new OBD2. I discovered McPherson College in McPherson, Kansas. They have this wonderful automobile restoration program. So that was a very pivotal moment for me to sort of realize that maybe college is something I should be open to, and I'm grateful that I did because my life won't be the same without that decision. So I think for Lucy, her next sort of reincarnation uh, is going to be with this nice small block 302 V8 engine. I'm going to put up a five-speed transmission behind her because I want five speeds going to give me one extra gear so I can cruise the highway, give me a whole new future to sort of relive and sort of enjoy this car for many more years to come.